I became a doctor because when I was 13 years old, uh, my grandma ruptured an aneurysm and uh, a, a, an endovascular neurosurgeon saved her life and she's still alive today. I grew up working on cars with my dad. Um, I was the type of kid who'd take apart things and try to put them together. And I find that IR or interventional radiology gives me that because it's a problem solvers like playground. Um, we, you know, because we're not just cutting things open and looking at them and manipulating them, there's a lot of 3D spatial reasoning, there's a lot of planning, there's a lot of knowing different devices and stuff to do something, you know, through a, a wire the size of a human hair from the groin, but I'm working on a tumor in the liver. You know, um, it, it's, it's just a very, it, it allows me to apply my knowledge of anatomy, physiology, pathology, radiology, and then also my fine motor skills in a way that is just very, very satisfying. image guided surgery uh, or surgery without a scalpel. So we use ultrasound, CT, and video x-ray to guide needles, catheters, and wires anywhere in the body to do various things. The change in blood flow between this and, and before, I guess you could speak to oh, <laughs> 24 like nine, hours. Like night and day from what it yeah. was for 24 hours. In vascular and interventional radiology, we do stuff head to toe, old to young, you know, on a given day, I'll, I'll work on a 500 gram baby in the NICU and a, a 95 year old end of life cancer patient and everything in between. I basically kind of split the difference between the stent and the wall and then opened up the vein okay. again. Most of what we do can be done without general anesthesia and all of it is pretty much done without any sort of scalpel, stitches, etc. So the vast majority of things that we do, people are going home the same day with very minimal recovery time um, and n fewer complications uh, with regards to scar tissue, you know, closure site complications, etc. The type of stent that you have in is stronger um, than the old type of stent that you had. Um, it's what's called an open cell design. The difference between an IR like myself and an interventional cardiologist or vascular surgeon or neurosurgeon is at the end of the day, those guys are still surgeons and they have the bailout option of cutting something open to try and fix it that way. I don't do that. And so my thought process and my mentality on how I'm going to approach a procedure and how I'm going to get success is different because I don't have the bailout. I've got to do it better because I can't bail that out. And so there's a different thought process. There's a different creativity. There's, a, there's just a totally different approach. As a radiologist, I see all of that pathology on imaging. And as an interventional radiologist, I get to intervene and make things better as well. And that's kind of, it, it, it's a perfect crossroads of, you know, thinking and acting, you know, diagnosing and fixing. That makes it just, just uh, I think, the best field in medicine. You feel, what, that on a scale of, you know, zero to 100%. Oh, probably about 90% easy. I follow up with all my patients. I call them a week after the procedure. I see them longitudinally in my clinic. And that is the most rewarding part of my practice because I get to see how I've impacted these people's lives. You know, when I put in a Metaport, I always tell my patients, my favorite thing to do is not putting this in, it's putting it out because then I can give you a high five because you're done with your cancer treatment. You know, it's to be in that relationship with a person longitudinally um, that is part of the reason why I went into medicine and uh, continues to give me a lot of, of gratitude today.